dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring John Hodiak in The Rainmaker, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is your producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your motion picture favorites appear in plays we know you'll enjoy. The outstanding motion picture performer, John Hodiak, is our proudly we hailed star. John appears in our story, The Rainmaker, as Sam Parks, the harassed young mayor of Buena Vista, who is facing a double dilemma of an impending election and a very serious drought. We'll raise the curtain on Act One right after this brief message from Wendell Niles. Veterans of the Army's 3rd Division, attention. You have priority on this great new career feature. You may enlist directly for the 7th Infantry Regimental Combat Team. This famous Army outfit is being brought up to strength and will be stationed at Fort Benning, Georgia. Veterans of other outfits are also eligible, but 3rd Division veterans have first choice. So get complete information right away at your U.S. Army recruiting station. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Rainmaker, starring John Hodiak as Sam Parks. The town of Buena Vista was the center of a rich agricultural area. Buena Vista, the good view. And in normal times, it was just that, when the fields were full and the yield was heavy. But the year our story begins, there was concern about the harvest. And our busy young mayor of Buena Vista, Sam Parks, worried about it as if he were entirely responsible. Yes, I did worry about it. We all worried about it. Practically no rain for six months and a dry year the year before. And I remember how considerate my wife Nora was. And what a help she was to me. She started my days right anyway. Your breakfast is on the table. Coming, darling. Good morning, sweet. Oh, good morning, mayor of our town. Well, don't I get a kiss? Oh, of course you do. Uh, hey. <laughs> uh, you know, you're probably the youngest mayor in the country, and undoubtedly the most handsome. Oh, thank you. Now, you may have your breakfast. What does the paper say? Well, the weatherman still hasn't come around to our way of thinking. Here, darling. Oh, I don't know. We're going to get some rain pretty soon. We will. <laughs> Darling, please don't let your breakfast get cold. No, I mean it. We're in for trouble. Mm-hmm. What in the world is that? Hmm? Where? It's there on the sports page. Oh. Oh, that's a wrestler. Handsome Hubert, glamour boy of wrestling, hmm? to make appearance in Buena Vista. Oh, well, of course. I've heard of yeah, him. What a character. Darling, isn't he the one who uses Chanel number no. 5? Yeah, that's right. Six foot eight, 310 pounds. He must use gallons. Oh, sure. They spray it on with a fire hose. Do they really? <laughs> I don't know. But they do say he has chartreuse hair, if you please, in a new coiffure each week. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, more coffee, darling? No, no, thanks. Donuts? Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Is that one of old man Keeley's donuts? Yes. No, thanks. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Every time I eat one of old man Keeley's donuts, my stomach hollers treason for the next week. I'm sorry, darling. I, I didn't know they affected you that way. Oh, sure they do. Like when I'm flying and used to come out of a power dive, only worse. Say, what in the world is he wrapping around these donuts? Oh, little slips of paper. Slogans or something. Well, let me see. Hmm. Love thy neighbor. I tell you, Nora, old man Keeley's losing oh, his Now, now, darling. Is that any way for the mayor of our town to speak? Well, he is, though. Shh, quiet. Hmm. Oh, hey, it's late. I'd better be getting to the office. <laughs> All right, darling. Look at those blue skies, will you? They're so blue, they're monotonous. You still worry about it, don't you? Well, honey, let me tell you something. If we don't get rain, and soon, and by soon I mean in the next week, we're not going to harvest anything this year. And there'll be friends of ours hard-pressed, and others destitute. Yes, I know. But, darling, the situation is in very good hands. You think so? I do. I'm referring to God, of course. Oh. My wife. What would I do without you? Uh, 
Yes, my wife was a very fine woman. And if there was one thing I wanted most in the world, it was for her to be proud of me. On the way down to my office in the city hall that morning, I had a premonition that things were going to happen. I had that dull feeling in the stomach you get. And I tried to put it off on one of old man Keeley's donuts I'd eaten. The old man owned the town's largest bakery and restaurant. Quite an eccentric. Well, when I got to the office, I found I was half right. Good morning, Mayor. Oh, good morning, Tudor. Anybody down yet? Well, Mr. Dooley's on the job inside. Oh, thank you. Well, good morning, Dooley. Oh, hello, Sam. You're down early. What's up? Oh, plenty. What's plenty? Two things. Yes? Uh, the first is just something to get in your hair. All right. The second is serious. Serious? Really serious. Well, uh, all right, Dooley, let's start with the easy one. What's that? Old man Keeley's outside. Oh. He insists on seeing you. Well, all right, send him in. Right, Sam. Go right on in, Mr. Keeley. Oh, thank you, son. Thank you, thank you. Well, Sam, Hello, how, be you? how be you? How be you? Fine, thanks. You? Oh, well, I'm still a hundred to one shot to anybody's mausoleum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and they thought they had me in that black suit 20 years ago. Well, you look fine, Mr. Keeley. Well, I would have been up before, Sam. Had a flock of visitors. Oh? Cousins of mine from Toledo, another cousin from Cincinnati. Well, you have more relatives than a movie star. <laughs> That's right, Sam, <laughs> yes. They're all just as hungry. But uh, what I want to tell you is this. Uh, first, I'll be pleased to serve on the voting board for the sheriff election coming up. Fine, Mr. Keeley. Uh, without pay, of course. Well, that's very generous of you. Uh, we're electing a sheriff, ain't we? Yes, that's right. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I wish it was me. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, I wish it was me. And that brings uh, me to what else I want to talk to you about. Uh, now, you know this drought we're having. Yes, Mr. Keeley. I've got my own special theory about it. And oh. my theory is this. We ain't getting rain because we ain't deserving of it. I see, Mr. Keeley. No, you don't. No, you don't. Not till I explain. We're so busy arguing, fighting, clabbering up things against each other, we don't look for nothing good like rain till it's too late, which brings up another point. Yes, Mr. Keeley. This town's going to dogs. That's another reason. Needs to be cleaned up. Why, that roadhouse they put up on the east end of town. Do you know when they built that building, that was the beginning of our drought? Well, now, I didn't know that. And furthermore, it's rumored that they're soon going to have gambling there. Well, now, I don't know where you get your information, Well, Mr. don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I have the best. That's why I wish I were running for sheriff. I'd run them all out of town. I'd clean it up till it shone like an emerald. But in the meantime, uh, my activity is limited. Yes. Uh, you've eaten one of my donuts lately? Well, yes. I must say I've had that experience. Well, then, you've seen the slips paper? Yes, Mr. Keeley. My thoughts for the day. My slogans. Uh, what yours read? Uh, love thy neighbor. Oh, yes, yes, that's mm -hmm. a good one. Yeah, yes. that's a good one. I'm printing up a thousand more of that one. Well, Sam, I won't be keeping you longer. Well, Mr. Keeley, believe me, you're doing a very wonderful thing with your slogans. And we'll be counting on you to tabulate the results election day. I'll be there, Sam. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Keeley. Goodbye. Now. Bye, Mr. Keeley. Come on in, Dooley. Okay, Sam. You know, Dooley, there's an old man everybody thinks is crazy. And he's got more sense than you or me yeah. or a dozen... Yeah, I know. Slogans. Well, Sam, you'll pardon me for interrupting your eulogy, but... Uh, yes? Well, there's still that second little item on our agenda. Now, wait a minute. Uh, have you talked to the Weather Bureau this morning? Yes. Fair and warmer. Indefinitely. Mm. What about that weather expert from the Institute of Technology, the dry ice man? He's on his way here. With a pilot? With a pilot. Fine. All right, Dooley, shoot. What have you got on your mind that's so serious? Only this, Sam. The opposition has dug into events of last year. They have a hunch it was your decision which turned down that valley dam water. Well, so what? Sam, you just can't shake this off like it's nothing. Well, it was the only thing I could do. Well, maybe so. But try to prove it now with people facing a drought. Well, why all the uproar about it anyway? Sam, turning down that valley dam water can be distorted to bring down a very unsavory label on your office. Gross negligence. All right, so what? Don't you know the charter, Sam? Here in this town, they can recall the mayor just for that. Yes, Trudor? Uh, you're watching the phone, Mayor. All right. On line one. Thank you. Hello. Is it the mayor of our town? Hello, darling. What's on your mind? <laughs> oh, nothing much. Just thought I'd call. Well, that's very nice of you. Uh, of course, it had nothing to do with this grocery list I'm going to read no, you. No, of course not. Okay, shoot. Well, it's just a small one, Sam. Bread, tomatoes, and green vegetables. Well, that's easy. Sure that's all? Mm-hmm. You don't mind my calling you like this, do you? If you didn't, I'd spank you. <laughs> that's good. You see, you have no idea what it does to my ego. Having the mayor of the town himself deliver my groceries. Bye, darling. Goodbye. 
All right, Dooley. Well, what does it all add up to? Well, only this, Sam. You've got to be very careful at your press conference this morning. They'll try to needle you. Just be sure you don't lose your head. <laughs> bringing an expert up from the Institute of Technology. He's one of the originators of the process whereby dry ice is spread through cloud formations to precipitate rain. And so you see, ladies and gentlemen of the press, we're doing everything humanly possible. What if we don't get rain by the end of the week, Mayor? Well, isn't the situation critical? It is critical, and you can quote it. Mm. One more question, Mayor. Yes? Weren't negotiations on last year for certain water rights in the Valley Dam? Yes, negotiations were very definitely conducted. And didn't someone in the administration turn down that water? I suppose so. I haven't seen any of it trickling around lately. I knew it. Take it easy, Sam. Well, I think it was a blunder. Every man is entitled to his own opinion. And no, a stupid Sam. blunder at that, and I think the city's entitled to know who made it. You know what? You're right. No. Sam. You're absolutely right, and I'll tell you. I made the decision not to accept the Valley Dam water last well, year. Oh, I made it. I made it because at the time it seemed like unnecessary, costly insurance. I made it on the basis of the 75 years' experience of our Weather Bureau, which neither had encountered nor anticipated conditions even remotely resembling those we face this year. Thank you, Mayor. Not Thank at all. Well, that's that. I'm sorry you did it in a way. In another way, Sam, I'm proud of you. Thanks, Coach. Well, one thing, sure. That expert you've got coming down here better bring a little rain. Oh, excuse me, Mayor. I thought you might be hungry after your very torrid session. I sent over for some sandwiches. Oh, uh, thank you, Trudor. Thanks very much. <laughs> Everybody likes ham on rye, I trust. <laughs> well, these sandwiches are from old man Keeley's place. I hope they're not like his donuts. Old man Keeley, did you say? Yes, that's right. Then we'll get a slogan. Is <laughs> he putting them in his sandwiches now? Sure. Listen to this. Very appropriate, too. Smile, darn you, smile. <laughs> Mine's appropriate, too. Isn't it great to be alive? Oh. Well, isn't it? Pause briefly from our story, The Rainmaker, starring John Hodiak, to bring you an important message. You young men who belong in aviation, the U.S. Air Force is your great opportunity. If you are a high school graduate, you can choose the type of aviation training that appeals to you most. And when you qualify for enlistment, you'll be guaranteed the course of instruction you want. In other words, you select a field in which you wish to become expert, and the U.S. Air Force will train you in that field. And don't forget, as you learn, you'll be in line for promotion to higher ranks and more responsible positions. As for pay, well, just ask any U.S. Air Force man. He'll tell you it can't be beat. Men, most of the outstanding figures in aviation have become famous through the U.S. Air Force. And if you qualify, you can be one of them. Get all of the facts about career opportunities in the U.S. Air Force now. Ask at your local U.S. Air Force recruiting station or nearest Air Force base. The curtain rises on Act Two of The Rainmaker, starring John Hodiak as Sam Parks, mayor of Buena Vista. Time is running out, and Sam anxiously awaits the arrival of the weather expert from the Institute of Technology. That wasn't the only thing I was looking for. I was looking for clouds. The man had to have just the right kind of clouds. Everything was happening at once. Well, I must say my devoted wife, Nora, stood by me through it all. She even came down to the office. Oh, what can I do, darling? You can watch for clouds right out that window. Oh. Oh, there. Hmm. Any particular kind? At this point, who can be particular? When does your expert arrive? We should get in today sometime. Oh. Well, what's all the excitement down there? Well, what do you see, dear? Darling, hmm? handsome Hubert getting out of a car, all 310 <laughs> pounds off him. Well, I must take an evening off to see him. Oh, uh, Mayor, here's a wire from your expert, Mr. Simmons. Oh, good. What does he say? Mm, Delay today, arrive tomorrow noon. Oh. Well, at least we know definitely he's coming. Oh, and one more thing. Mr. Keeley's waiting. Wants to see you. Oh, him. no. Mm-hmm. 
Well, all right, send him in. <laughs> yes, sir. You may come in now, Mr. Keeley. Well, thank you, thank you, daughter. Well, hello, Sam. Hello, Mr. Keeley. And Nora. Oh, how are you, Mr. Keeley? Uh, well, I'm doing fine for a young man of 64. 64? Well, if Jack Benny can say he's 39, <laughs> I can say I'm 64. Well, you certainly could have fooled me. I'd never have believed you were that old. Well, now, isn't that sweet of you? And now, Sam, I won't keep you a minute... Uh, would have been up sooner, but I got more relatives clavering up the place. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Keeley. I know how your relatives are. Yes, cousin from Wichita, another cousin from Jacksonville. Huh? My home is like the Ambassador Hotel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Sam, I want to ask you about the election tomorrow. Well, uh, Mr. Keeley, I'm not even going to think about the election. You've served as head of the election board so many times before, you don't have to ask me. Uh, I know, Sam. Just thought I'd do you the courtesy. Well, the drought ain't getting any better, is it? No, it's pretty serious, Mr. Keeley. My slogan campaign is going all out to combat it. That's what's wrong, and I'm sure of it. It's this town. Why, do you know what? I have it on very good authority. They're planning to put a gambling hall in that what? blasted roadhouse. Now, Mr. Keeley, that can't be true. But if it is, we'll put a stop to it. Quick. Well, I don't know. That's what the sheriff's office keeps us saying. But they don't fit their words with actions. Uh, well, Sam, I'll talk it along. Uh, goodbye, Sam. Goodbye, Nora. Oh, goodbye, goodbye, Mr. Keeley. See anything yet? Oh, not a cloud in sight. Mm. You know, a wonderful old fellow, Mr. Keeley, trying to lick the drought with his slogans. <laughs> Could be. Well, you really think so? Could be. Well, I'll settle for a sky full of clouds tomorrow noon when my expert, Mr. Simmons, arrives. <laughs> News of our experiment in rainmaking began to spread all over town. It was the topic of conversation on everybody's lips. And early in the morning, when a heavy cloud formation moved overhead, everyone in the community gathered at the airport. Everyone, that is, except me. I was at the office waiting with Nora for Dooley's call from the airport. Oh, darling, why won't you sit down and relax? Sit down, relax. Are you joking? Yes? Mr. Dooley calling from the airport. Oh, put him on. Oh, yes, ma'am. He's on line one. Hello, Sam. Dooley, I've been waiting to hear from you. What's happening? Oh, trouble. Well, what do you mean? Didn't Simmons arrive? Oh, he got here all right. Well, what then? He had to get hungry. All right, Dooley, hold the suspense. Now, what happened? Well, he got hungry and went into old man Keeley's restaurant here at the airport and ate one of Keeley's donuts. Oh. Need I say more? Now, don't tell me. Where is he now? In the hospital. His slogan was, do a good turn every day. All right, all right. What about the pilot of the plane? He ate two donuts. So you know where that puts him. Now listen, Dooley, if this is a gag... This is no gag, boss. Both men are actually in the hospital. Oh, what a constitution I must have. And some other people here in town. Well, did Simmons look at the clouds? Yeah. He says they look perfect. He says all you need is some powdered dry ice and an airplane. All right, now listen to me. I'm coming out there now. Tell him to get a plane ready because I'm going to fly it. Right. Darling. Uh, yes, Sam? I want you to do something for me. Go down to that frozen vegetable outfit on 5th Street. Yes, Sam. And get as much dry ice as they've got there and have them powder it. <laughs> All right, darling. Now bring it to me at the airport and hurry. All the way out to the airport, I watched the skies for a break in the clouds. They seemed to be holding fast. When I arrived at the airport, there was a crowd the likes of which I'd seldom witnessed. It seemed that every man, woman, and child in Buena Vista was at the airport. Dooley among them. Well, you made it quick, boss. Yes, you got everything ready for me? Not quite. Not quite? What's happened? Trouble. Look, don't you know any other word but trouble? What is it? They ran out of gas here on the field. They had to send into town for something. Well, that's all right. We have to wait for Nora anyway. She's bringing the dry ice. But it wasn't all right. Nora was late. The gas truck was late. And it was nearly dark when I was finally ready to take the air. I took the plane up, and I climbed her as fast as she would take it. When I got above the clouds, I pulled the release gear and watched the white cloud trail out behind me. Then I pointed her nose for the airport. As I came in, I could hear a roar. I didn't know what it was at first. Then I saw it was the crowd, and Nora was running toward me. Rain, that's what it is. Oh, darling, it's, darling, it's happened, it's happened. This is rain, this is really a rain. Oh, darling, if you only knew how I prayed for you up there. Oh, it's so in, Sam. Well, it looks like we made it. It sure does, thanks to our expert, Mr. Simmons. Thanks to you, Sam. Oh, will you listen to that crowd? It 
took us a while to get through the crowd, and when I finally got back to the office, it was early evening. And I had another surprise. Well, Mr. Keeley. <laughs> Sheriff Keeley to you, Mayor. Sheriff? Sheriff Keeley? Yes, I was just elected. Have you forgotten the election today? Well, well you, you weren't even running. Well, I was a write-in candidate. Wrote myself in. But I don't understand. You see, when everybody was out at the airport waiting for that phony raid-making, I nominated myself, voted for myself, and won by a majority of O-N-E-1. Uh, but the procedure The election isn't... was entirely legal. Polls are closed, and already I've exercised the duties of my office, and that brought us the raid. What do you mean? Ran that gang operating the roadhouse clear out of town. They had roulette wheels and everything. I gave them the double-zero treatment. Smashed them all. Well, and the minute I did, it started to rain. Yes, but how in the world, Mr. Keeley, you against that crowd at the roadhouse? Oh, I had help. Cousin of mine from Minneapolis. You want to meet him? <laughs> all right. Oh, Cousin Hubert. Eh. Uh, uh, come here, will you? I want you to meet Mayor Parks. This is my cousin, Handsome Hubert the Wrestler. I'm charmed, delighted, and please no end. Well, Hubert, this is a real pleasure. Oh, your hair really is chartreuse. This week it is, old boy. And uh, you wear nail polish. Flamingo red. And you actually marcel your hair. Right again. And now that you've made your assessment, would you care to match checkbooks, old boy? <laughs> I see what you mean, Hubert. I see what you mean. <laughs> You don't mind taking a walk in this glorious rain, do you, darling? Oh, I could walk all night in it. <laughs> I told you about Mr. Keeley, uh, Sheriff Keeley. Uh-huh. He was taking all the credit, and I let him. <laughs> Just like I'll give the weather expert, Mr. Simmons, the credit. But if anyone really cares to know, I was at the controls of that airplane when it went up. Oh, uh, Sam, I, uh, I want to tell you something. Hmm? Yes, dear, what is it? Before you take too much credit... That wasn't dry ice in the plane. Hmm? What do you mean? The machinery at the frozen food plant broke down. and Well, I tried all over town to get some dry ice, but yep. no luck. So I, um, I just substituted some flour. Flour? Just plain old white flour. Oh. Well, how do you like that? <laughs> oh, it's funny, darling, but, but I, I just thought of what you once said about the drought being in very good hands. Yes, darling? Here we were all trying to take credit. I guess old man Keeley was the closest. Yes, darling. You're right as always. Things are always in very good hands. Always. The curtain falls in the final act of The Rainmaker. Our star, John Hodiak... We'll return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Veterans, here's your chance to make your career with the U.S. Army. You can enlist directly for any one of eight well-known Army units all now stationed in the United States. If you have served abroad after September 1st, 1945, you're eligible. And here are the outfits from which you can choose. The 2nd, 4th, 5th, and 9th Infantry Divisions, 2nd and 3rd Armored, 2nd Engineer Special Brigade, and 82nd Airborne Division. These organizations are stationed at posts all over the country, from Fort Dix, New Jersey, to Fort Ord, California, and from Fort Lewis, Washington, to Camp Hood, Texas. Yes, veterans, it's a real choice. Many of you will qualify for higher ranks up to staff sergeant upon enlistment. And don't overlook this. The time you have served already counts toward the Army retirement in 20 or up to 30 years. Ask for complete details right away at your U.S. Army recruiting station. Now back at the microphone, our star, John Hodiak, and our producer. A curtain call is certainly in order for our star, John Hodiak, who has given us a very delightful portrayal of Sam Parks, the Rainmaker. Nice going, John. Thanks, C.P. You know, I've been cast as a heavy for so long, a role of this sort is both a relief and a pleasure. Yes, I recall you left radio work in Detroit and Chicago and headed for Hollywood because you were being typed as a villain. That's right, C.P. They made me the number one Simon Legree, and I was really tired of playing heavies. I was certainly happy to get to Hollywood. And then what happened? They uh, <clears throat> made me a heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that was the beginning of a spectacular career. 
Say, I understand you were quite a baseball prospect back there in Michigan. Well, I played baseball, yes. Third base, as a matter of fact. More than that, I understand that the St. Louis Cards had a place for you in one of their farm teams. But now that the baseball season is getting underway, tell us, John, who do you like? Well, I like Detroit in the American League, hometown, you know, and uh, Pittsburgh in the National. Sounds like you've been playing golf with Bing. (laughs) But getting back to Hollywood, John, we're all looking forward to your latest picture, Homecoming. Thank you. That's quite a cast. Yourself, Lana Turner, Clark Gable, not to mention your very lovely wife, Ann Baxter. And, John, thanks again for your performance here. A great pleasure, C.P. And now, before I leave, what's next on Proudly We Hail? Next week, we're happy to present a gay comedy, My Big Brother, a sophisticated story of a wife who, improbable as it may sound, tames a lion hunter to save her own husband's love. Our star will be that lovely actress of stage and motion pictures, Jane Wyatt. I'll be sure to catch it. Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, John. Join us next week, won't you, ladies and gentlemen, when we present a gay comedy, My Big Brother, starring Jane Wyatt. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. John Hodiak appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Rich Hall, with the orchestra directed by Eddie Scrivanek. Remember, proudly we hail, next time presents Jane Wyatt. This program was transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.